All right, hey, hey, Jelly Toast here, back with more great Ace Attorney Chronicles. I'm streaming way early today because I want to get to playing Animal Crossing again. I legit played Animal Crossing all day. I've been updating my design. I've been getting more vegetables. I got plumerias, new bushes, which throws off my entire island bush design. Uh, I'm gonna have to rearrange my bushes. I've been getting rid of all my flowers, but anyways. Alda, please, let us resume proceedings. Witnesses, you will now retake the stand. Oh yeah, we gotta find out what's up with these guys exactly. I'm not wearing headphones because I don't want to right now. I presume you heard the defense's count defense counsel summation examination. Oh yeah, governor. I did go. I did. Mr. and Mr. Skulkin. Oh, blimey! This is going to be hard work. Earlier in this trial, you gave the following testimony about your actions after you entered Windbanks. Well, oh, I forgot I'm supposed to be looking at this, but otherwise I'd read too early. Well, it was better than sure that's weren't it? It was, nice. it was. They didn't even have time to pull me Duke Sammy Lucy Lockett. However, that was a lie. You brothers. Cool, blimey. On the night in question, you rifled through the items on the victim's counter. We never done nothing on the sword. How would you figure that out? <laughs> you will now give formal testimony once again. You will tell the court precisely what happened on the night in question, and this time, you will tell the truth. No, they won't. Each lie that passes your lips serves to increase the severity of your punishment. And that, gentlemen, may deal a crushing blow to your chances of ever seeing the light of day again. Earlier in the trial, wasn't he like, oh, they're courageous, they're, they're witnesses, they're, they're good guys, like, whatever, but now he's just like... Fess up, you liars. I don't understand him. A thought worth pondering, perhaps. Say no more, Gov. We hear you. We'll plop, we'll squeak, we'll peach. Sorry, I really need to cut this nail. It's really sharp and bothering me. This is gross, but I gotta do it. It was just too pointy. It hurt. There we go. A legal entry, the whole truth. All right, we did knock a few things over, but we weren't rifling for nothing. It was when we heard the gunshot, see? Made us both jump and all that stuff went flying. Well, I mean, it didn't ask me a fright. We was thinking the shoe would come out the door and get us next. We stuck everything back where we found it and scarpered straight into him in the black. Ow, now the nail's stuck under my nail. Oh, We couldn't have shot the pawnbroker, see? We never had a chance, did we? But you do shoot someone else. Mm -mm, so you admit to the defense's accusation. You did indeed ransack Mr. Windbank's countertop on the night in question. Eh, uh, not ransack of no, no. That's right, Nash, that's right. It's more like we tidied up. Yeah. Uh, sorry. By their own admission, these brothers entered the pawn brokery under dubious circumstances. However, they panicked and fled on hearing the gunshot, having first made good their mess. The way you say it, we hardly sound like Ross at all. We don't, Nash, we don't. Can't make us sound a bit more cutthroat? It can't just be coincidence that these men showed up at a windbank that night. There's more to their testimony than meets the eye. I'm sure of it. Cross examination. We'll make our dreams come true. As always, press every statement. If that's the case, then why didn't you testify to that effect in the first place? Well, you know, we ain't exactly squeaky clean, are we? 
We ain't Nash, we ain't. If we admitted to something like that, people would think we was up to no good. Well said, wrinkle my old china. What? We only land ourselves in even more trouble. And in fact, now, as a result of lying in your previous testimony, that's exactly what you've done. Landed yourselves in even more trouble. Ah, uh, well, um... That's for a look. Says the rotten apple eater. Witnesses. Explain your actions to the court. Why did you ransack the victim's counter? Never ransacked nothing. Right, now, nah, right. More like we tidied up the place. You said that before. Oh, sorry. It was when we had the contract that all the things were flying. So what you're saying is... The sound of the gunshot shocked you so much you knocked all those things off the counter? Well, it shocked one of us that much, yeah? This bag of nerves needs to learn to keep his shirt on. Look, it was loud, right? Blimey, me dead granny would have broken up that that bag. Big Bertha screamed like a blooming baby and fell over on the counter. He knocked over a load of books, a candlestick and some skull whatnot. That got tangled in some marionette what? Knocked over a picture frame what? Knocked over what knocked them scales on the floor. You really mastered working quietly then. Whoa, racket. Me granny would have been scared back in a grave at a clatter like that. So in short, the gunshot took you by surprise. And then some. I mean, it was quiet as a mouse and all of a sudden, BAM! Not so fast. Inspector Gregson, do you have something to add? Like I keep saying, I don't appreciate being lumped in with these scoundrels. No, something to add about their testimony? You seem to react just now at what Mr. Skulkin said. Did it make you think of something? It's probably nothing, of course. We don't even bother to mention it, only. Well, the fact is, cases don't get solved if you ignore the little details. How about you just tell us what's on your mind? As you know, we brought these fellows into the yard for questioning last night. And the statement they gave then told a slightly different story to what they're saying now. He... What? Ah, <laughs> uh, um, did it? You claimed you heard the victim shout something um, out before the gunshot. Might have, girl. Might have. Does ring a bell now you'll mention it. Granted, it's only a minor detail, but still. I can't help feeling like perhaps you've been a bit sloppy with your testimony here, eh, fellas? If I discover the witness's testimony has been any more sloppy than it has hitherto proven to be, I shall be forced to bring the very harshest punishment to bear against them. Easy, easy! Fucking right this time! You just get it right the first time. That's it. Yep. It's all coming back to me now. Then speak. Supplement your testimony with whatever details have miraculously returned to your questionable minds, sirs. Uh, <laughs> right you are, Gov. Just before the gunshot, we heard a voice yelling out, Give me that gun. So, in fact, you heard the voice and the gunshot almost simultaneously? We did, go. we did. Although, I suppose if you're being honest, we heard a kind of wavering voice before the yell and all. If, if you don't want to get shot. Give me that gun! Bam! Kind of thing. A career in acting tragically missed. <laughs> Maybe they will become actors after this. And where were the voices coming from? Could you tell? Of course we could. From the other side of that door behind the counter it was. From the storeroom where the victim was found dead. And the voice you heard, it was that of the victim, Mr. Windebank? 
Oh, me grinding life. Whoa, of course it was. Oh, you grinding life. Of course it was. Aren't you guys brothers? So it would be the same grandma. So that would mean... That you both knew Mr. Windebank and the sound of his voice. So that would mean... What? <laughs> what, Nash? What? Any ideas? Yes, Council. Indeed it would. Ooh, how did you know his voice? Nah, nah, nah. We, we didn't know the geezer. Oh, my supposed night when that broken all the fancy crop was giving us the evil eye. <laughs> if you value your lives, you will ensure your testimony is accurate and true. Ah, uh, oh, me granny's life it is. Ah, uh, oh, his granny's life it was me. It's a good job his granny's dead. <laughs> to summarize then, immediately after hearing the voice of the victim, you he you then hear the gunshot. Causing you to stumble and upset the items on the counter, scattering them over the shop floor. You make it sound like we're clumsy. Don't forget we tied up after like good little boys. Anyway, the way I see it. Look what on the bash. Wait, the the bloke what owned the place was holding a gun, so she should have just fired instead of yelling at the girl. Huh? Didn't. Hmm. You're saying that Mr. Windenbank had a gun in his hands? How'd you know that? Oh yeah, bet that was a sight, eh? The two of them waving the guns at each other must have gotten pretty heated. So Gina also had a different gun, but we only found one gun at the scene. I mean, just before we shout out, we heard the geezer say, if you don't want to get shot. Didn't really sound like you meant it, mine. More of an empty threat, you could say. Mr. Windebank was known to keep a revolver on his shop counter at all times. People say that to protect the articles in his keeping, he'd readily put a bullet in someone's head if required. That's someone being himself, of course. Good grief. Extraordinary diversion indeed, if alarmingly misguided. Well, he certainly sounded like he was ready to pull the trigger the other night. Only the person he was gonna shoot beat him to it. Cooked his goose proper. Bet you wish he squeezed the trigger instead of wasting time shouting, Give me that gun. And it was directly after those words that you heard the gunshot? It was more or less at the same time, Gov. Give me that gun, Pyam. Kind of thing. Yes, a career in acting. Very tragically missed. Then we heard the sound of someone hitting the deck. Before everything went dead quiet. After that, we done a slap dash job tidying up the place up. Didn't have to be a fright. We was thinking the shooter would come out and get us next. So you didn't try to open the storeroom door then? Not on your life. It went deathly quiet after that, it did. Put the wind right up me. But anyway, the door was locked, weren't it? No way that was opening. Yes, of course. It was locked from the inside, or so we've been led to believe. It was, cuz it was. From the inside. But how would you be able to tell if you didn't even try the door? Right, so we had no way of knowing what was going on in there, did we? Unless there was some other way to get a view of the inside of the storeroom. Like through the keyhole or a spy hole, perhaps? Don't ring no bells, don't light no lights. We had to cut and run before we noticed anything like that. We're still cutting our teeth in this game, see? But one day... We'll really cut the mustard. Please, cut it out. <laughs> But as we know, behind that door was the victim's lifeless body, with the accused not two feet away. Yes, unfortunately. Gina was in there, unconscious, with the gun in her hands. Two 
Central, would it be correct to say that neither of you set foot inside the store room? That's right, Gov, that's right. Cut off even if we want to. Stuck everything back where we found it. Yes, whereupon you fired a shot from your own gun at Mr. Herlock Sholmes. Oh, um, yeah. Um, we was a bit hasty there. We was, Nash, we was. Truth be told, I was already shaking like a leaf when you lot turned up. If you're shaking like a leaf, don't put a loaded gun in your hand. Good, good advice, miss. Good advice. Truth be told, me mind we totally blank. Before your mind goes totally blank, make sure you don't have a loaded gun in your hand. <laughs> Mental note made, miss. <laughs> After that, we legged it down the street, but apparently we looked dodgy to the coppers or summit, so they clapped the derbies on us like women. And after you'd been handcuffed, the police found this revolver in your possession, correct? Um, well, yeah. But listen, that proves it, doesn't it, eh? Uh, we couldn't have shot the pawnbroker, so we never had a chance, did we? And why should we believe that? Eh? What? Well, cause it's true, isn't it? The place was totally empty when we went in. At that time, the victim was already in the storeroom, having been forced to open the door by the accused who had a gun to his head. That's conjecture. In other words, on the night in question, these two witnesses never even laid eyes on the proprietor of the prom brokery, Mr. Windebank. Correct. You've got it, mister. Down to a T. Hmm. So the Skulkin brothers never actually encountered Mr. Windebank. Is that really true, I wonder? No, it's gotta be a lie. That's it? That's the full extent of their testimony? What is it, Runa? You look very fierce. I could pour you some herbal tea if you're tired. Oh, thank you, but I'm fine. Being such a logical thinker, you'll probably laugh. But I feel as though these brothers are still hiding something. Something important. It is nothing more than a feeling, though. I have no proof to support it. Hmm. Well, feelings can be very logical at times. Sorry? People's expressions, the movement of their eyes, the words they choose. And take all that and and your brain will quietly analyze it to come up with a feeling like you describe. You've concluded that there's something suspicious about this testimony without knowing why, that's all. I think you should trust your instincts. Hey Smooth, how you doing? Thanks for joining. Happy Thursday! It's almost weekend. Woo woo! Iris, thank you. Sometimes I think if she if she's ten years old, I must be five. <laughs> Uh, do I press again or do I show something? Mm, what is my evidence? Pawn brokery ticket. Can I take a look at the pictures again? Examine. Candlesticks. Everything was the same except for everything on the counter. Is that right? Can I use this, um... Can I use this? Um, you have to pop your two pins in here to start with, you see? And then, when you look through the eyepieces, you can see the image in three dimensions. The important thing to get right is the position of the two prints. I don't know who came up with the idea of a stereoscope, but it's really quite fascinating. No, it's really quite annoying. Wait, that's it? Can't I use this? I can't use it. Never mind. Hmm. Squawkum Brothers, Windbank's gun. Let's examine this again. Hmm. 
Representation peppers. No, I think I just have to press again. Because now we have new information. That's the case of why didn't you talk about for that effect in the first place? You know, we ain't exactly squeaky clean. Back now. Blah, 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 blah. Like, I'm wondering if I push it again, then um, there might be another like reaction that Gregson would do. But nope, that was the same. Just before the gunshot, we heard a voice yelling out, give me that gun. Well, was old, the place was old and gone, so we should have just fired instead. Wait a minute! They're saying that... You heard the voice and the gunshot almost immediately. Wavering voice before the yell. If you don't want to get shot, give me that gun. If you don't want to get shot, give me that gun, so... Where were the voices coming from? Storeroom. The voice you heard, it was that of the victim. Saying, give me that gun. But then... But then, um... In his next testimony, Nash says, if the owner was holding the gun in any way, he should have just shot her instead of yelling. So, isn't that... Isn't that the contradiction? Oh, we don't know the geezer. Um... Oh no! Uh, damn it! Damn it! That's the that's the line I need to hear. To summarize that, immediately after hearing the voice of the victim, you hear the gunshot. Give me the gun. So then. The bloke what owned the place was old and a gun, so he should have just fired instead of yelling at the girl. How do I... You're saying that Mr. Windbank had a... Two of them waving guns at each other, but there was only one gun found! Do I present the gun then, here? They're not sus at all. Definitely not. We heard the geezer say, if you don't want to get shot, also, hey Kirby, how you doing? Thanks for joining. Happy Thursday! Didn't really sound like you meant, um... Okay, I will present the gun at this statement. Because they said they were both waving around guns. So that's where that third gun is. Kirby, how long is this trial? <laughs> Are you done with this case? Yeah, you're done with this case, right? Everything with that quiet after I was slapped just a little. Okay. Um, I'm gonna save just in case. Your forehead is shiny today. Oh yeah, I just um took a shower and then I lotioned up and now it's very shiny. Going to present the gun because we only found one. Nope, it was wrong because the music's still going. Uh, sorry, Council, but I failed to see the connection. It's because there's only one gun! But we well, should have fired instead of yelling at the girl. I... What else do I have? Mm. Single discharge. Photograph. Show the single bullet. Um. Upper half of the victim's back. It entered from the back, so... But it was happened immediately, so can, should I present this then? Stuck everything back, we found stay in the back. Could have shot the pawnbroker. No, I, I didn't know that was the last statement. 
Um. <laughs> Because if it happened immediately, then when would he have had time to turn around? Right? That's my thinking. Um, I'm going to present the autopsy. Watch it be wrong. Nope, the music's still going. Nope. No, 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 no. Okay, okay, okay. I'm gonna load. Oops. Load. Because I don't want two strikes. Hmm. So the, ob the glaringly obvious um, thing is that um, there were two guns in the storeroom because they both said they were waving guns at each other. Someone hitting the deck. Mm. Two of them waving them guns at each other must have got pretty heated. We heard the geese say, if you don't want to get shot. Then Gina said, then that must mean Gina said, give me the gun. Right? I don't understand. Am I? Hmm. I don't, I don't understand. Uh, I can't go to um, their profiles. Nope. The picture of her and him face each other. Oh, I guess. I'll I'll present this. You're saying that on the night in question, the victim, Mr. Windebank, was wielding a gun. Is that correct? <gasps> Smooth, you're so smart, you're so right. But why would it be that? Like, I knew it had to be some kind of evidence that showed that there was only one gun. That's a guff, you've got the picture. Yes, now she has, no question. And yet the photographic evidence from the time of the in incident clearly shows that Mr. Windebank was not in possession of a firearm of any description. You surprised me. Does the defense really intend to highlight evidence that compromises the position of the accused even more? Ah. Furthermore, the defense has failed to establish that the photographic print presented was taken at a suitably short time prior to the victim's death. Your chronology is severely lacking, counsel. Yeah, that's right. Oh, look at him looking so smug, I want to bash his chin in. Too right, Nash, too right. The old geezer could have been about to turn the tables on the girl, eh? Hardly likely. No, I'm afraid this won't stand as conclusive evidence. Uh. Continue with the cross-examination, counsel, and heed my earlier warning, witnesses. So it's not a strike, but it's not... It's not progr- What? Look what owned the place was holding a gun, so she just fired instead of yelling at the girl. Just people gun job. Wait, then what else is there? Let me. It didn't give me. A, we were thinking a shooter come out the door and get us next. I what? This won't stand as conclusive evidence. Um. Where's this autopsy? One to one thirty. Yeah, so it has to be. I don't understand because they're like, oh, it's not that much time then. But like by the next time it's one thirty, like everything's put back. So the guys are gone. So like, yeah, it had to have happened shortly after. No, is it not?
Right? Um, examine. Yeah, because 130. Let's see, is the door closed? The door's closed in both. Okay, you know what? I'm gonna go back. Oops. I'm going to present the 130 picture now. This is like, uh, nope, wrong, wrong. Stop, stop, shut up, shut up. I get it, I get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, then what is it? We're thinking the shooter come out the door and get us next. Should I present Windbank's gun because it's like he only ever has one shot in there? When I play this game, I'll be racking my brain in it after watching you play. Man, it's just like, okay, all the other cases before this, it was like very straightforward. This piece of evidence, this statement, blah, blah, blah. But now this is starting to get real like convoluted and like you have to kind of piece stuff together like they didn't straight out give you both photographic prints even though Van Zeeks was holding both of these photos for the stupid stereoscope no you had to pit two jurors against each other to be able to get this print to be able to be like wow something's different get the new testimony it's stupid I'm gonna um wait but they don't know that Windebank's gun only has one shot in there we know that because there's no way that they I don't know! I don't know! Oh. The, the thing we have to point out is that there were two guns. Like, why can't I press his statement? Wait, I'm gonna... Because it's at this one that he says... That... Two of them waving guns at each other, like, is it... Come on! Two of them waving guns at each other, then can I present this here? I can't! This is, oh, I can see people here. <sighs> no point in looking around because no one ever, no one says anything again. Yeah, shut up. Oh my gosh. Um, I pressed every single statement after that because I press everything. I pressed that after... Should I press this again? Yeah, let's just press again. So in fact, you heard the voice on gunshot almost simultaneously. We did go, we did. Although I suppose you're being honest, we heard kind of a wave in first before we yelling all. If you don't want to get shot, give me that gun. Bam. Kind of thing. A career in acting tragically missed. And where were the voices coming from? Was could from the door behind the counter from the storm where the victim was in. Why are you streaming when the grumps are streaming? Um, because it's a normal day that I stream and they're streaming their playthrough of Danganronpa and I don't want to be spoiled by that because I want to play it myself. That's why. Also, hey Regal, how you doing? Thanks for joining. Happy Thursday. Voice you heard was that with the victim, Mr. Windebank. On the greatest life, of course it was. Granny's life, of course it was. So that would mean that you both knew Mr. Windbag and the sound of his voice. Eh, so that would mean what? What? That's what? Any ideas? Council of War? No, no, no. We didn't know the geezer. Um, if you value your lives, you'll ensure an enemy's doesn't know who Granny's life it is. Granny's life it must be. It's a good job his Granny's dead. Summarize then immediately you hear the gunshot causing you to stumble and upset the items on the floor. Make it sound like we're clumsy. Don't forget to tell you. 
Your stream is messed up. How? Why? What's wrong with it? Is it something technical? I'm gonna look it up. I, I can't. Uh, Great Ace Attorney Chronicles Case 5. Walkthrough. On the floor map, where were they? The brothers or the, um... The victims? The... Game audio is static? Oh, what? Why? Damn it. How's that? <laughs> uh, episode 5 guide. New evidence to the paper. Ringo Skulkin, okay. <clears throat> got that, got that. Judicial findings, new evidence. Ba -da -ba -do. Got that. Uh, okay, so I'm on part six. Um, pursue that, pursue that gets deleted. Let me, let me, let me. First press statement two, yeah. You present crime scene photograph at statement three. It doesn't bother. Okay, this this makes no sense. Okay, so give a little advance seeks warns them. After that, you want to present crime scene photograph at statement three. And statement three is this. So we're going to present. How am I supposed to know to sh show this? That's so stupid. Stream is sounding better. What did you do? I replaced, I uh, just like took out the HDMI cord and I put it back in. What would you do without me? Um, have a terrible stream. <laughs> so you're saying that on the night in question, the victim, Mr. Windebank, was wielding a gun. Is that correct? That's it, girl. You got the picture? Yes, now she has, no question. And yet, photographic evidence obtained immediately after the incident clearly shows that Mr. Windebank was not holding a firearm of any description. That's that's how I'm supposed to know that two that's how I'm supposed to link the two guns? Oh, that's stupid. Eh, you what? <laughs> Cool and Bennett, that ain't right! There can be no question that the victim's revolver was used in the incident. I would remind the court that Mr. Winterbank's gun was found at the scene. The old unplug and replug, mm hmm? Anytime something goes wrong, always turn it off and on again. Not only was it identified as the murder weapon, but it was found in the accused's hand. Yeah, that mole tooler used the victim's own gun to finish him off. Give me that gun, bam. Kind of thing. Say exactly where you are, right there. Eh? Oh, because they're facing each other. But he got shot in the back. If the crime scene had taken place as you so colorfully described in your testimony. It would give rise to an undeniable and significant inconsistency in the final moments you just acted out. Goodness, are you sure, Counsel? You intrigue me, my learned friend, but let's see some evidence to support your claim. Where is the proof that demonstrates this inconsistency in the witness's portrayal in the final moments? Isn't it that same photograph? Because he's shot in back. According to their testimony, the witnesses claim to have heard a shout of give me that gun followed by the gunshot. Indeed, with the two events happening almost simultaneously, also we've been led to believe. 
Yes, that's right. Now, if that testimony is true, it would mean that at the moment of death, the victim and his attacker would have been facing each other. However, if I could ask the court to study the photograph of the victim's body again, you can clearly see that Mr. Windebank was in fact shot from behind. Ah! <laughs> the case is afoot. See, and also, like, sometimes they have, like, the weirdest piece of evidence that that links that, oh, hey, there was no second, there, like, where's the second gun? It's weird. So, as I stated before, there is an undeniable inconsistency in your testimony, Mr. and Mr. Skulkin. Me. But, 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 it's the God's honest truth. It is not serious. When we were shot that night, the shopkeeper had a gun in his hand. We saw it with our own bleeding eyes. But you said you didn't see it. Did I hear you right, ju right just now? You actually saw Mr. Windbank holding a gun. Um. Something like that might have slipped out. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you have all just heard the admission by these two witnesses that on the night in question, they actually saw, with their own eyes, the victim wielding a gun. Which can only mean that despite their testimony to the contrary, the Skulkin brothers must have encountered the victim in person. Ah, uh, um, um, Nash, um. Yeah. All da, all da. Witnesses, explain yourselves at once. Well, the thing is, it weren't supposed to, um... It would seem that my previous warning fell on deaf ears. I made it quite clear that false witness would be the death of you. Am I to understand that you've replaced the untruth of your original testimony with renewed lies? Um, ever so sorry, Governor. Truth is, see, we, um... Cut it out, Nash, cut it out! If you blab now, you know what it'll do to us! He? Who are they talking about? Let me make your position here perfectly clear. You will talk. There is no other option available to you. Ah, uh, bro, come on, the game's up. But but he'll have our guts for girls. In case that hasn't quite sunk in yet, either way, you're gonna die. No matter how hard you try to hide it, the truth will come out. Ah, uh, um. On the night in question, it is now apparent that you brothers met face to face with the victim. I demand that you testify again to explain the precise circumstances under which this meeting took place. Um, well... Do we have to? You're on oath. You're on trial, man. You, you have to. On pain of death. I suggest you make yourselves fully aware that this is your very last chance to tell the truth. Bum bum ba -da. Of course, there always has to be three, like, versions of a cross-examination. Alright, so we just got inside the gaff and heaved a sigh of relief when the geezer showed his mug. Give me that gun, he bellowed, and then he flew at us like he was possessed. I thought we had it! For an old geezer, the bloke was strong as an ox. He chucked me over the counter. I put me gun on him and then he legged it through that door in the back room. We never had nothing to do with kill him. That's all what happened, I swear. But you just said you shot him, so... So now you're tell- So you're now telling us that moments before the victim was killed in the store room, you in fact encountered him in the main part of the shop. Um, well, yeah. Sorry. Well... We found ourselves at an interesting juncture. juncture. This changes matters considerably. But, but 
Oz, governor, this time. This time, Nash, this time, we ain't got nothing more to hide. You're still sweating, though, so clearly you do. Very well, counsel for the defense, you may proceed with your cross-examination. Yes, my lord. This is it. The moment I've been waiting for. I've been waiting for this! Okay, now! Alright, so we just received a ring. Kyushu's mug. Get him, Jelly. I'm a get him good. When you say geezer, I presume you mean the victim and proprietor of the shop, Mr. Windebank. Who else? Well, sorry, I mean, that's right. We was keeping a close eye on the entrance to the calf, obviously. But we never thought no one was gonna come out of the back room like that. The back room being the palm brokery storeroom. Yeah, that must be where it popped up from. Only place- oops, this is Ringo. Only place it could have been. So it would seem the victim was already in the storeroom when these brothers entered the premises. Which means Jenny must have been in there at that point as well. But that doesn't make sense, does it? If Gina had threatened Mr. Windebank into the storeroom with her gun at gunpoint, with her at gunpoint, then why would he have emerged from the same room all alone when the brothers arrived? Oh, I don't know. Did you see the accused at that time? What? That monster? Couldn't, couldn't tell ya. No way, Copper. We have bigger fish to fry then. I mean, the old geezer just lost it. Oh, the him they're talking about is probably Edgar Benedict. Give me that going, bow and food. Wow, so thank you so much for the 17 month sub. Like Scoob, I'm gonna fight God now. Oh, wait, Scooby Doo fought God? When? <laughs> also, hope you've been well, dude. Happy Thursday. You mentioned that Mr. Windebank shouted those words in your previous testimony, too. However, you claimed that you heard him yelling them on the other side of the storeroom door. Oh, um, eh, did we? Shaggy fights God. <laughs> oh my god, I didn't realize when I was younger watching the Scooby-Doo cartoons that um, Shaggy was supposed to be like high all the time. Which is why I don't understand when, um, Adults and parents are like, censorship laws, we can't show children this because it's like, we've never run into that concept before. We don't we don't know these things, we just think Shaggy is like a silly dude. Shaggy is a vegan stoner. Yeah, none of us knew that when we were watching it growing up, we were just like, haha, Shaggy's silly. Like, mm -mm. I mean, I agree that some things have to be censored, like extreme violence and like, you know, some foul language, but you know, concepts and stuff, it's like, you don't really have to. Like, I watched Die Hard when I was in third grade, and I didn't understand most of what was going on, because I don't know. <sighs> wasn't me. <laughs> but the truth is, he was shouting those words at you, wasn't he? Um, well, he, he, yeah. Scooby is a genetic experiment that was tortured for five years until Shaggy saved him. Is that why he can talk? Oh, that's a creepy theory. Oh, gosh. Was the victim, Mr. Windbank, wielding a gun at the time? Was he ever? Blimey, Tommy. A great ugly barrel he had pointed straight at me front piece. So what you're saying is... You definitely saw Mr. Windbank with the gun at that time. Is that right? It is. Gold it is. Spot on. Yes, yeah, not a theory as canon. When did they, um... Which movie or episode is that in? I didn't know that. Then all of a sudden he came at us, he did. It was Bedlam. I didn't know who was going for who. You were clearly all going for each other. Like Nash said, he, we thought we had it. I mean... One of those where the emo go from lemonade mouth was Velma? Who is lemonade mouth? Uh, who's strong as an ox? No encounter. Yes, I noted that you mentioned the counter in your previous testimony too. Well, yeah, of course we did. He knocked over a lot of books, a candlestick, and some skull whatnot. No, what, 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 am I missing something? Back all tangled in some marionette, what knocked over a picture frame, what knocked over a scales on the floor. 
So in fact, it wasn't the sound of the gunshot that shocked you and made you knock those things off the counter. Next thing you're gonna tell me is that you don't know who Jason David Frank is. Who is that? Well, big brother, you weren't flying over that counter like a gunshot, I can tell you. Then the old geezer pinned him. He did, nah, she did. If you hadn't been there, the bloke would have flattened me like a balloon pancake in seconds. Ah, yes, the famous Jason David Frank. Who's that? <laughs> um, at the time in question, the alarm was raised at the local police station via a secret cable from the bond brokery. Tommy Oliver? Why does that name sound so familiar? Tommy Oliver. I mean, I know Michael Jackson and Rihanna. I don't... Green Ranger! Oh, I didn't know his real name! I only know him as the Green Ranger! I don't know all the Power Rangers actors' names. I only know their character names. Red Turbo and Red Zero Ranger. I didn't watch those. <laughs> At least you know who Jason Alexander is. Yeah, they're, they're great. And then the pink one was Kimmy. Uh, red one was Jason. Blue was Billy. Black was Adam. And yellow was Trina. Yeah. There is a button under the counter used to activate it, which was presumably pressed by the victim. That's right, when the brothers fled the scene and back onto the street. They ran straight into the arriving police, didn't they? Poor oh, Mr. Windebank. He did everything he could to- Oh, whoops. I skipped that. Whatever. I pulled my gun on him and then he left the fruit out of the door in the back room. But did you shoot that guy? Were you intending to shoot Mr. Windebank? No, 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 no. Never. I, I was just, you know, shooting a gun. <laughs> Looking out for me proof, weren't I? It was being flattened, don't forget. Funny, I played the Power Rangers theme song yesterday. <laughs> go, go, Power Rangers! By a man whose shop was being burgled, yes. <laughs> and then, the man fled into the storeroom when you pointed your gun at him, is that it? Yeah, that's it. He showed me away, then ran through that door and shot himself in. There's something about that last remark. Something that doesn't quite ring true. Hmm, I wonder why Mr. Windbank ran away into the storeroom. What? Well, according to what everyone's saying, Ginny was in there waiting for him, with a gun. Ah, yes, that's right. Gina allegedly used Mr. Windbank's gun to threaten him and force him to open the storeroom door. In which case, how did the gun end up in Mr. Windbank's hands again? I have no idea, but that is strange, isn't it? This little inconsistency could be significant. I should make a mental note of it. Look, the point is, me and me bruv here. That's right, Nash, that's right. Me and me bruv here. Never had nothing to do with killing him. Oh, guess what time I slept at last night? <laughs> Playing Animal Crossing. <laughs> you say you had nothing to do with it. Nothing at all! Nothing, Garth, nothing. The old geezer went and shot himself in the back room, didn't he? Locked it was from the inside. We know it was because we tried to open it. But it's a decent door, that one. Good and strong. One not an inch. So in the end, the situation remains unchanged. Inside the storeroom with the pawnbroker, there was only one other person. Gina could have been knocked out already. The sole person who could possibly have shot the victim, the accused, Miss Gina Lestrade. Ah. Hmm. It would indeed appear so. What say you to that, Council? I don't know. Was there anyone else apart from Gina who could possibly have shot Mr. Windbank? Yeah! Nash! <laughs> And then he stumbled into the storeroom and fell and died! Mr. and Mr. Skulkin. Eh, what? What's that look for? From the moment you admitted that you encountered the victim face to face that night. 
The course of this trial changed completely. Then who put the stuff back on the desk? The brothers did when, um, I think what they said was true. They did rearrange everything back on the desk. Right? <clears throat> Cause they're like, shoot, we gotta get out of here. <clears throat> but that was after a wind bank closed the storeroom door. And then they had to book it. I did? What is your point, my learned friend? The question we must answer is, who could have shot Mr. Windbank? And it is the belief of the defense that the defendant is not the only person possible answer- Wait, what? <laughs> that the defendant is not the only possible answer at all. Where did I add those extra words? You have my attention. In that case, let us return to this plan of the premises. The victim was killed in the storeroom, which was locked from the inside. Those are the facts. So pray, what other possible answer to the question who shot the man who could be there, could there be? Counsel. You must now provide answers to court in respect to two conundrums. Two, my lord. Twice as many chances to be right, maybe? Indeed, namely. From what location did the culprit shoot the victim? And furthermore, where was the victim at the time? The victim was on top of his brother, and he was shot by Dash! Are you alright, Muno? I'm not entirely sure, but there's one thing I am sure about. If I can prove that there's a credible new alternative to what happens, it would change Sheena's prospects hugely. So now, time for some clarity. Show the court on this plan the answers to the questions posed by his lordship. If you believe someone else could have killed the victim, indicate from where that person could have fired the gun. Isn't it out here? Because he, he threw him over the counter, they knocked all the stuff off, so... <sighs> just to be safe, just to be safe, I'm going to cheat again. And yes, I was right. The defense believes that Culper could have shot the victim from this location here. And an answer to the second question. What? What I do? I just wanted. I didn't want to just you know willy nilly. Like, point- I mean, I had a general idea because all the stuff was knocked over on the counter. But you know. Assuming the culprit fired from the location indicated, where was the victim at the time? It was here, right? This is set up, he shot up, but he missed. He fired, and then he missed, and then he shot again, and he missed! <laughs> oh no, I'm wrong! Oh, okay, good thing I checked because I was gonna say the victim was right here again. But no, the victim. He got shot in here. Oh, maybe Windebank was jumping and then he shot. I don't know. But it, supposedly, it's right here. The culprit shot the victim from outside the storeroom. Continue. Mr. Winback died instantly from a bullet wound in his back. Looking at the stain of blood in the storeroom floor, it doesn't appear that the body was moved after death. Which tells us that he was almost certainly shot while he was in the storeroom. However, the crucial point is, where was the shooter when the fatal bullet was fired? So you are adamant that the shot was fired from outside the storeroom. Well, according to the Skulkin brothers' earlier testimony... I pulled my car on him and then he let it through that door in the back room. If Mr. Windbank ran away through the door... We would have to assume that the door was open at the time. Ah. Oh. It was at precisely that moment when the victim was fleeing for his life. 
that these brothers had the perfect opportunity to shoot the man in the back once he was inside the storeroom. <clears throat> Come to think of it, do you remember what the prosecutor said at the start of the trial? Moving on to the Pfizer Scott and Ross Corner. This report states that the bullet entered the body on a racing diagonal trajectory. It means the victim was slightly shot by someone significantly shorter in height than herself. It wasn't Nash, it was Ringo then that, <clears throat> that shot him. Poor man, shot while he was running as fast as he could to safety. Ah, of course. He would have to have been leaning forward as he was running away. So even if the bullet was fired horizontally, it would still have entered the body at an upward trajectory. Oh, okay, never mind, it was Nash. So the culprit isn't necessarily someone shorter than Mr. Windbank. I'm sure my learned friend can't have forgotten that the storeroom door was found closed and locked from the inside. You claim the victim was shot as he fled into the room. Do you also claim his corpse was dexterous enough to turn the key in the lock? Yeah, but, but... What if someone else locked the door? Yes, there is someone else who could have locked the storeroom door. Is that so? Did he die instantly? That's what uh, they said. Very well then, counsel. Present your hypothesis to the court. In the scenario just described, the defense's assertion is that the victim was shot from outside the storeroom. In which case, who shot and locked the storeroom door from the inside? I mean, there's only one other person that was there, so Gina? <laughs> then how is she knocked out? Obviously, the person who locked the door was the only other person inside the storeroom at the time. The defendant, Miss Gina Lestrade. That's absurd. You're suggesting that the accused deliberately engineered the sealed room. For what possible reason? Such actions would only serve to tighten the noose around their neck. I'm inclined to agree, I must say. Well, counsel? Ah, yes. That's a tricky one, that, isn't it? Half-baked notions have no place in my courtroom, counsel. Remember that, please. But of course Ginny would have locked the door. It almost goes without saying, doesn't it? It does? There's a guy with a gun outside. Of course she wants to be safe. Well, if I was Ginny in that situation, I know I would have to be locked. I know I would have locked the door as quickly as I could. I mean... Those two burglars had just fired a gun in our direction, hadn't they? Oh, yes, obviously. Before the two brothers arrived, Mr. Strata and Mr. Windbank were in the storeroom together. Now, I don't know what went on between them at that time, but at some point, Mr. Windbank must have heard the intruders breaking in a sh into a shop and left the storeroom. So who shot first? The oldest question. <laughs> Han shot first. Intruders, eh? That's us, bro. If your theory is correct, that would leave the accused alone in the storeroom. Yes, it would. Then, probably only moments later, the victim fled back through the storeroom door, hoping to escape danger. Dang. Hit in the back by the bullet, Mr. Windebank fell to the floor where he was, just inside the storeroom. And what we have to ask ourselves now is, what would the defendant have done in that moment? I see what you're going with this. Outside the storeroom was a terrifying killer who had just murdered Mr. Windebank. As soon as that thought struck Miss Lestrade, she slammed the door shut and locked it. In order to save her own life. That was a weird voice. But, boy, I mean, we ain't the ones who done it. We ain't go if we ain't. You gotta believe us. I mean, come on, we never shoot no one. That's blatantly untrue. I know for a fact that you would. Because before my own eyes, you shot Mr. Herlock Sholmes. There's only one logical conclusion here. Mr. and Mr. Skulkin, you brothers had every opportunity 
to have been the true per perpetrators of Mr. Windbeck's murder. Uh, um... Um... Yeah... Where, where does this leave us? You mean to say, it wasn't a pickpocket who sh shot the pawnbroker after all? Well, I should have known it was those three brothers. They look as shady as dense forest. Oh, I want some black forest cake now. That was amazing, Bruno. All the members of the jury seem to be firmly on your side now. And then Van Zeeks is going to do something, and it's going to be... I know, first time ever, and probably the last. Well, I think you've done it. Surely they'll have to get a verdict of not... Oh no. Kehehe. <laughs> An admirable effort, my learned friend. What's this now? He's laughing. You find the situation amusing, Lord Van Zeeks. I myself find the defense's argument most persuasive. There is no concrete evidence, that's all just conjecture, you can't prove it. <laughs> I dare say. Such chicanery is the bread and butter of the street performance in your provincial eastern nation. How would you know? Have you ever been to Japan? Shut up with your racist face. But such blatantly malicious conjuring tricks amount to nothing more than inexcusable per- What? Petfoggery here. What? The hypothesis you put forward so ostensibly, credibly, cannot and will not stand. Because, you see, it contains a fatal flaw. A fatal flaw? Do you mean to tell me that you're unaware of your logic's failing? I say, Lord Lanzix, might be an idea to explain this bally contract trick or whatever it is to the troops on the ground, hmm? The fatal flaw in my learned friend's argument is really very simple to understand. Assuming you're not too dim-witted to count bullets. By George, count bullets? Oh dear. He noticed then. Huh? What's everyone talking about? Council. Yes, sir? Tell the court how many bullets were found at the scene of the crime. Two. Two bullets! Uh, uh, uh. Correct. The first, that which hit the victim in the back, ending his life. And the second, that which struck the detective, Mr. Herlock Holmes, on his arrival at the scene. Indeed. The defense presented a picture showing the damage caused by the second bullet earlier in the proceedings. The bullet which injured Mr. Holmes appears to have passed through his body to strike the calendar. Your lordship's understanding is correct. Furthermore, we know there are two firearms involved in the incident. The revolver belonging to the victim, Mr. Windbeck. And the Skulkin Brothers' revolver. The evidence shows that a single bullet was fired from each gun. Yes, indeed it does. A single bullet from each. Oh, so if they're saying, if I'm saying that the Skulkin brother shot Windebank, then how would Windebank's gun, which was found in the storeroom, have shot Holmes? Frack! Well, here's what you do. You use Windebank's gun to shoot Holmes, and then, yeah, throw it into the storeroom. It magically lands in Gina's hand, and they close the, the hole. Oh, no, wait, the hole was open. Only the door was closed. But the porthole was open, so they could have thrown the gun into the room to make it land in Gina. Now then, my learned friend. You yourself told the court only moments ago that these two brothers, unless there was a third person with his own gun and the, the brothers aren't um, fessing up about it, that these two brothers shot Mr. Herlock Holmes right before your eyes. Yes, I... I did. Oh my goodness, I... I think you'll find... That if the single bullet was fired from the brothers gun hit Mr. Holmes, it means... Windbeck not shot by same gun. Stop. Only one bullet. Stop. 
Exactly. Yes, this Nipponese street performer presented an ostensibly credible argument. However, I want to shut this guy's face up. It was never anything more than a diversionary trick with no hope of standing up to scrutiny. Uh. Wow. Uh. Oh, ah! Whoa. Pray forgive the discourtesy of flinging the dregs of this hollowed nectar into the public gallery. Lord Van Zix. But this court needs to open its eyes. The accused, Miss Gina Lestrade, is no ordinary little girl. How did Gina go unconscious? A third person would explain that exactly. Despite her young years, she can, regrettably, no longer be described as a juvenile. No, the person in the dock is far from a law-abiding citizen. She has a past riddled with criminal conduct, and your current witnesses don't? Like, shut your trap. The truth is, the accused broke into the pawn brokery on the night in question with the loathsome intent. Again, conjecture. As we can see beyond the doubt in this print which depicts her threatening the victim with a murder weapon. And I have here in my possession one more piece of evidence the prosecution wishes to present. Why are you choosing to present it now, you idiot? That disc. I'll be taking that wall off all my building down to yard, thank you very much. No, don't! Don't get it to him, it's mine, that is mine! I'm sorry, miss. But anything belongs to McGill and I should be taking it as evidence now. Yes, that music box disc. McGill's music box disc. The very day before the hateful murder of Mr. Windebank. The accused attempted to make off with this article, which clearly doesn't belong to her. And with none of the subtlety of a pit pocket, I might add, but by brute first, force and brazen imp impudence. Good gracious. Make no mistake, any sympathy for the accused on account of her years is misguided and dangerous. There are no depths to which this girl will not stoop if pushed, no crime she would not commit. The court forgets that fact at its peril. Hmm, I see. I think it would be prudent to take this music box to skin to evidence counsel. As a grim testament to defend its character. Um, Lord Van Zix, I, um... He- Oh, that's the copy that Sholmes made! Or Iris made! That's the copy, because the Gregson took it! Ah! You can cook bass, yeah, with um five weeds and a sea bass. Mm -hmm. Inspector Gregson, what? Yes, Inspector. We had a meeting yesterday at the yard with the prosecution uh, service, and um, I think it was agreed that this couldn't be used as evidence. Or or what? Why wouldn't it? What's this all about? Why is the inspector acting strangely? Wait, but Sholmes also made a copy, so what? That's the first time he says anything to Van Zix at all. I am unaware of any such meeting. But, but those were the instructions right from the top. The government bigwigs were insistent. Oh, snap. This, this goes way beyond McGill did. It's probably got to do with all the secrets leaking out online um, from Great Britain. It's probably from those music discs. Uh, why would you cook a bass? Do you play it? <laughs> you could cook sea bass in Animal Crossing now. Inspector, I am the prosecutor, and I alone determine how to present my case. Your warning is noted. Thank you. Mm. Wait, but there's blood on that disc, so if Iris uses her, her blood spray thing and we can see what color the blood is, then we'll be like, no, this belongs to someone else! The prosecution wishes to proceed with submitting this disc as evidence, my lord. It, indeed, bailiff. Music box disc has been entered into the court record. For McGilded. The prosecution has established the accused's motive, opportunity, and baseness of character. 
There's nothing more to add. Shut your trap, there is. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, I await your informed decisions and rest my case. So if he rests his case, then he has nothing more to add, right? So then I could just go in and just, just do my own thing? I don't believe it. I had the jury on my side for once for all five minutes. Wait, um, I didn't examine the disc. Examine... Hey, I risked her blood. Oh, Runo, look. This is blood. Yes, you're right. Just a small smear, but definitely blood. Actually, I feel as though I might have noticed that before. Haha, -ha, then it's my time to shine again. I thought I'd be waiting forever. All right, hold still with that disc, Runo. Can we get this done quickly, Iris? In a flash. What color is the blood? What color is the blood? What color is the green? So it's... It's Sholmes' blood? So it's not Windbank. She didn't get it off of Windbank. Ooh, a lovely bright shade again. Wait, that color. What is it? It's just that green. It... It's not the first time we've seen that color, is it? Do Oh my gosh, it's blood. For McGilded. Streaming three days in a row. This has got to be Sign of the Apocalypse. Hey, Golden, how you doing? Thanks for joining. Um, yesterday was special because the Animal Crossing ca uh, update came out early. So I really wanted to um, show first looks at it. And then today's just normal streaming day. But I started streaming earlier because I want to get back to playing Animal Crossing <laughs> after this. That's the man you defended in court a couple of months ago, isn't it, Reno? Yes, or rather, mistakenly defended. I wonder what his name is doing on the back of this disc. That's a question I'd love to know the answer to myself. Did you visit my town? No, I didn't. I was, um, I was on a roll redesigning my islands. Think I'm almost halfway done. I got my amusement park out. I moved the museum and the tailor shop. Um, I just, I moved uh, Lily and Jeremiah's home, so now I need to move Zell and Dottie's home. And then um, I need to redo like my side of the island, so like my little section at top, Genji's little section, Marina's section, fix up my farmland to grow all my vegetables and fruits, and then move my remaining villagers over. So lots, lots of house moving, but that's what I have left to do. I want to see the bug portfolio. Just to be doubly sure. Windbank screen. Thrice Fire Mason purple. Pop. Windbank is blue. The case isn't over yet. Oh dear. Wasn't even for five minutes, Reno. Good, because I have to update it. Nice. My lord! Wonder if I might say something at this point. Proceed, Mr. Foreman. Been stumbling about in a bit of fog up to now, if truth be told, but all of a sudden... The answer's probably obviously to me and my men. There's only one thing for it. Oh no, and then we're gonna do another summation examination and blah 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 blah. Very well, this court will hear from the jury. Ladies and gentlemen, you will present your learnings as to defend its culpability. Yuzai! 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 They had the same four boring ordinances. That sucks. Yeah, I looked at the ordinances and I was like, this is... I'm not gonna spend 100,000 bells on that. We have consensus among the jury, it seems. When you have eliminated the impossible, whatever remains must be the truth. I'm going to punch your face in. That's... that's my line. I wrote that for Hurley. Ah, oh, how dare he use it against us. Don't worry, Iris. I don't think we're finished yet. There's still more to this case than we realize. There must be, because there's one thing that I'm absolutely certain of. Gina didn't shoot Mr. Windbank. That's beyond any doubt. Very well. We will proceed with the second summation examination of the day. Mr. Foreman, are you and the other jurors ready? Garadub Squadron is primed and ready for action, sir. Very good. 
So, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, you will each explain on what grounds you have now determined the defendant to be guilty. <sighs> Guess what, guys? I have new evidence. Once a rogue, always a rogue. I say, hmm, different breed to us law abiding citizens. So, the two birds we find a scene, I would say the whole case is done and dusted. You don't need a stereoscope to see the truth here. Every which way you look at it, it was that pickpocket. Hmm, I never imagined a simple operation would cause me such grief. The accused attempted a theft on the previous day. I can see I'm in for a busy day ahead. I am ballistics expert. I have seen many shootings. There is nothing I do not know about guns. Hmm. It would seem there is a little remaining room for doubt. I have to admit, I was rather bowled over by the argument put forward by the chap in black. But when that fell apart like a house of cards, I saw that I'd jolly well been hoodwinked. Well, no more! Ugh, the whole courtroom is turning against me. It's not fair. Iris? The prosecutor's being mean. Just because Ginny's done some things she shouldn't have done in the past, that doesn't make her a murderer. Where'd you get that new bottle of wine? Throw it out. Allow me to savor this fruity vintage while I savor the spectacle of your fruitless debate on the matter. Here's to the truth coming out, eventually. Yeah, it will, and I'll shove your face in the mud, and you'll be so embarrassed, and a loser. This guy's such a tool. He is. He's so annoying. That's enough preamble. Counsel, proceed with the summation examination. Yes, my lord. Man, I missed a deducing. Yeah, 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 press. Just because Mr. Stott has a history of pickpocketing, she must be guilty of murder, is that what you're saying? Oh, well. Are you- are all members of the British Army so quick to judge? I beg your pardon. Are you mocking Her Majesty's Armed Forces, the greatest military organization in the world? No, I'm simply illustrating my points. Making assumptions about people because they're a soldier or a pickpocket is wrong and dangerous. Hmm. Well, yes, might have a point there, I suppose. But let's not forget, the girl already had shown she had it in her from before. She's clearly a criminal sword through and through. Can't deny it. When you say that she'd shown she had it in her, are you referring to this? Exactly. Tried to swipe that only a day earlier, hmm? Well, I'm not mistaken. Not exactly. Given that I was actually there at the time, it's hard to refute that. I've never actually seen the real thing. I can't wait to have a closer look at it. Oh yes, of course. Mr. Sholmes did use his caramel bars to make a copy of the disc, didn't he? And then ordered every type of music box he could, uh, he could find from across Europe. The brothers were worse than a pickpocket. I know! They're just like, oh my gosh, she's a pickpocket, she's a murderer, and it's like, these guys are actual burglars, and they and they're actually carry their own gun. Like, come on, guys. You still don't know what tune it plays, though, do we? Is there a Hello Kitty event going on? In Animal Crossing? I don't think so. But I'd love to see how the original compares to Hurley's copy. The gilded's disc. Could it be a clue somehow? Perhaps we should examine it in more detail. I already did. We found the green blood, so now we have to find who the green blood, uh, whose statement that uh, is for. It's the number of bullets that has you convinced. Only two bullets were fired, and two guns that fired have them, uh, that fired them have been examined by the police. When the parlor maid asks me how many I'm ready for dinner, I always tell her to count the table settings. Well, that's logical, I suppose. Although... Yes? Sometimes after dining, crockery does go missing. One or two guests rather like the fine china. Did your employer dine with thieves? So I suppose... There was another bullet somewhere of which we were unaware. I'd have to reconsider my position. 
The bullet is inside Sholmes. There are three bullets. I saw a video that had Hello Kitty in the shop. Mm, maybe because of the Sanrio amiibo? I don't know. A third bullet somewhere on the scene. Could that be possible? Uh, not. I, I can't prove it yet. So I don't think I should say I can prove it. Or. Yeah. I really can't prove it yet. Unfortunately, only two bullets were discovered by the police during their investigation. Yes, I know. Right. And I don't imagine the good men of Scotland Yard would have overlooked anything. If I missed a bullet while I was cleaning his lordship's office, well... I should receive a sound scolding, I don't doubt. Shut up and just let me talk to the doctor. And he should receive a visit from the police, perhaps? Sounds like a crime scene to me. Hmm, a third bullet. It would completely turn things around if there was one, wouldn't it? Do you think we might find one lying around somewhere? Yes! Inside Holmes. No, oh, no, sorry, 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 sorry. I meant to go to the doctor. Would you please stop wondering about things that have nothing to do with this trial, sir? The defendant's life is on the line here. Hmm, well, the thing is, I couldn't really say that it has nothing to do with trial, to be honest. Huh? I mean, there's no question that the man was shot, but the bullet had simply vanished from his stomach. It's quite inexplicable, don't you think? I almost don't want to ask, but this surgery you've been muttering about all this time, you were operating on... What would the foe's name now? Herlick? No. Herlock? No. Herlock? Herlock Sholmes by any chance? Yes, good lord. It was that hairlock fellow. What? You're, you're the surgeon that operated on Mr. Sholmes? No way. Never saw that coming. That's right. Using the latest anesthesia techniques, I might add. It was a fairly major op, I can tell you. Do you need the amiibo cards? No, I have the Sanrio amiibo cards. I don't think I'm going to be able to get any of the um, Series 5 amiibo cards that's coming out tomorrow. <sighs> eh. This is crazy. Let me see, the fellow was brought in not long after midnight, if I remember correctly. He said he'd been shot by some criminal or other, so I opened him up like a shop. But the funny thing is, I went over his insides with a fine tooth comb and couldn't find a bullet anywhere. So I'm afraid I had to throw up my hands and just stitch the fellow back up. So then, was Sholmes really not shot? But I was there when he was shot. Mm -hmm. I hate to state the obvious, but... Yes? Surely that's because the bullet is at the scene of the shooting. The counsel for the defense is correct. As is clearly shown in this photograph of print. The bullet that Skulkin Brothers fired um, at Mr. Sholmes hit him in the stomach region. That exited his body and lodged into the shop wall where the calendar was hanging by the door. I think you'll find it's really quite simple if you just consider the problem three-dimensionally. Who do you think I am, son? Um, well, juror number four is about the best I could do. As soon as I saw the wound to the man's stomach, I flipped him over. Like a pancake? Are you saying that you checked spec? Of course I did, and there wasn't a trace of injury. No sign that the bullet had left the body at all. What? That's the point. The only logical conclusion was that the bullet was still somewhere in the man's innards. Which is exactly why I said about slicing him up. And I'm still not the wiser even now. How many times do I have to say it? Can somebody please explain how it happened? Can somebody please solve the mystery? It's almost as much of a mystery as how this jury was put together. And now I can pit them together. Where's an expert when you need one? I'm gonna pit you and you. Just do it. The two statements clearly contradict each other. Sorry, all being can't accept that as squadron leader. What? All oh, fighting for a common cause, don't you know, my chaps? No way to contradict another. I concur. What? Wait, what? No! The she wanted proof and. Love questionable characters in Garadep's squadron. 
You might have to listen to what they have to say a few times before it starts to make sense. Yes, and press them on I think that's so, but still Wait Where's the next bird and you need one? Oh, the ballistics guy. I am ballistics expert. And you know. Damn it! I pressed the pit at the wrong people. I thought you were just a tourist. Good day. I am visiting London for sightseeing. I would like to take Boston Crystal Tower, please. I am just trying to like rush through this now because I'm getting like so. There's no way he's just a visiting tourist. So you're a ballistics expert. Who knew? I have much experience with guns. Ah. I have lived through many, how do you say, um, extreme and violent bath of, um, no, blood of, um, ah, extreme violent blood baths, perhaps. Da, those, extreme violent blood baths. Hydrate, thank you. English is very difficult tongue. Considering the sort of people you associate with, I'm surprised you still have a tongue. Anyway, if you have questions about bullets and guns, you ask me. There is nothing I do not know. No mystery I cannot solve. He's very confident in his knowledge of guns, that's for sure. But if possible, please, please, only in R Russian language. 10k for hydrate richer men than me. <laughs> yeah, I had to after everyone kept spamming hydrate. He's not very confident in his knowledge of English, though, is he? No, still, we should bear it in mind. He's our man if there's a mystery about guns or bullets. And now I will pit them against each other. Van Zeeks has managed to convince everyone. When you have eliminated the impossible, he said, but he hasn't. If we're going to fight back, we need more material. And we have to fight back. We have to turn this trial around again. Shut up, shut up, shut up. Shut up. Uh... Those two statements clearly contradict the idea that all I do is pit jurors against each other. <laughs> Ooh, a ballistics expert! Pitting. P-I-T-T. On the night in question, Mr. Sholmes was shot by one of the Skulkin brothers. But since there was no sign of an exit wound on his back, we must assume that the bullet didn't pass through him. However, no bullet was found lodged in Mr. Sholmes' body either. Furthermore... A bullet was found lodged in the wall of the shop where Mr. Sholmes was shot. Then maybe the green blood doesn't belong to Sholmes, maybe it belongs to another dude. Juror number six. Hello, my name is Villain. Pleased to meet you. Want some? I got plenty. <laughs> this apparent contradiction in the facts that, that is so clearly troubling juror number four. Are you able to explain the mystery? I have seen very similar situation in Motherland. It was night, there was blizzard, I was running away along snowy mount mountain road in freezing cold. Golly. The snow was piling high on both sides of the road, it was very narrow and dangerous. My pursuers had hunting rifles and they were on dog sleds. Mental note, don't ask too many questions. I was shot from behind, and I fell down in snow. And this situation was very similar to what I hear today from doctor. They could not find bull in my body. And no sign of, how do you say, exit wound. Then, then where did the bullet go? Bullet never hit me. Well, if it never hit you, why did you fall down? Because it was a blank? Bullet hit frozen wall of ice very close to my side. What? One small piece, weary short, broke away from the lump of ice and pierced my body. A made deep wound that looks just like bullet wound. Good gracious. Of course, piece of ice quickly melted inside me. And that's solution to mystery of disappearing bullet. That doesn't answer the question at all. Hmm? 
A shooting happened in a pawnbroker shop. Not some snowy mountain in another country. Perhaps Holmes got shot and it hit the caramel discs that was inside him. So that broke into him? I don't know. Just an idea, but we might not be looking at exactly the same scenario here. We you know. Where exactly was Hurley shot again? Um, well, according to report, in the stomach. Sort of around this area, I think. Well, that's precisely where he always wears a little pouch on his belt. A pouch? Actually, I might have noticed something like that. Yes, a pouch. It's where he keeps three glass vials of very dangerous chemicals that he uses in his investigations. What? Really? Doctor, where is the pouch Mr. Sholmes is wearing? Hmm, well... The fellow had nothing like that on his person when he arrived at the hospital, as far as I remember. If I may. No, you may not. Lord Van Zeeks. Well, I realize it is forbidden for the prosecution to interject during summation examination. I should inform the defense that I have the pouch in question in the antechamber outside the courtroom. Why would you have that? Sorry? As I understand it, when the police arrived on the scene and found Mr. Sholmes injured, they removed the pouch in order to assess the wound. Ah, thank goodness. I thought I was uh, getting forgetful for a moment. Since then, it has been in my safekeeping all along with all the other evidence relating to the case. Just present it all now so we can get it over with. I can personally vouch for the fact that it has not been touched since the incident occurred. Pretty well, while extremely unconventional during a submission examination, I must demand the prosecution presents the item in question with all speed. Bring forth Mr. Herlock Sholmes' pouch. Hmm, I see. So this is the pouch worn by Mr. Sholmes on the night in question, is it? Look at that. One of the files is broken and the leather around it is scorched black. It's almost as if the file exploded. Exploded? So, that night, the bullet from the Skulkin Brothers' gun struck Mr. Sholmes' pouch. And it was a glass file exploding that caused the fellow's injury. This bullet did not penetrate victim, but was deflected into wall of shock. That still only accounts for two bullets, so that doesn't really help our case. A delightfully complex aroma. Well, it would appear one mystery has been solved, at least. Though it has no bearing on the truth of this case. The bungling and burgling brother shot the detective and the accused shot the pawnbroker. The pertinent facts of the case remain unaltered. Oof. But at least the mystery is solved. I can sleep easy tonight. Thank you, young man. No, thank you very much. Glad I could help. Due to its bearing on the conundrum to solve, the court will sequester the scruffy pouch as evidence. Who is pouches in scruffy? Holmes has been entered into the court record. Now, the submission examination. It would appear the defense is somewhat struggling to alter the opinion, huh? I only got to pit once! Come on! Please, my lord, a little more time. After all, that's a new piece of evidence. It could be a valuable clue, and you can't afford to overlook anything here, Yunosuke. There's still a way to turn this around, somehow. I'm sure of it. Okay, so my previous theory was wrong, that the bullet was still stuck in Shai Sholmes. There was no bullet! Okay, Pouch Sholmes was wearing around his waist at the time of shooting. One of the glass vials was smashed, and there are scorch marks around it. Um, do you know what he kept in there? There's... it's really scorched valley just here. Oh, the strap is broken. Look! This must be where the bullet hit then. Let me see. Oh, there's the bullet! So there's three bullets! What does Tortimer do? He lets you access storage. 
which is really helpful because um, if you want to just customize stuff with um, Reese and Cyrus, then you could just pull stuff out of storage and then stick it back. So you don't have to like constantly go back and forth between your islands. And also if you buy stuff from, um, from Kicks and you don't necessarily want to have it in your inventory, you could just shove it into Tortimer. What the? Iris, look! Behind where the broken file was, do you see it? Ah, that's... The Skulkin Brothers' bullet! What a stroke of luck that hit It hit his pouch. This amazing discovery! What this means is... There are three bullets in the scene... We found exactly what that juror was talking about. The third bullet! It's time to press that juror again, I think. Can you find all of Paris Island Lloyds at once? No, you can only do one a day. It's the number of bullets that has you convinced, and ba 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 da ba 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 ba. And then when I say when I get the choices, that's when I show the thing. How did you get that ABD on Harvest Island? Um, it's just there. Like, I didn't, I didn't put it there. I can prove it. Definitely not there for me. Uh, maybe you have to, um, fund your first gyroid. And then you can do it. Uh, da, 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 da. Whoa, projectile we just gonna The third bullet yes. Here it is. We discovered it just now. Yes, on the night in question of Windemanx Pawn Brokery, another bullet was fired. Mata. What is this new trickery, you Nipponese conjurer? You said yourself! No one touched a pouch from the scene. We did not met, like, we didn't do anything. Ya loser. I think I'm gonna go with a totally legit art dealer first. I would've, but I got all the art pieces. Ha ha ha. So, I got him, like, close to last. Where did you find that bullet? It was lodged inside Mr. Shalom's pouch. What? This pouch was removed from around Mr. Shalom's waist before he was taken to the hospital. And since then, it has been touched by no one. Do, do you mean to say? The shot fired by the Skulkin Brothers that night. Yes, as your lordship has surmised, it hit this pouch. But, but that makes no sense whatsoever. We already know the whereabouts of the bullet fired at Mr. Sholmes. It's clearly visible in this photographic print. Ah! Two guns from the scene have already been submitted into the court record as evidence. Yes, that's uh, that of Mr. Windbank, and that belonged to the Skullin Brothers. An examination of both guns revealed that only a single bullet had been fired from each. Ah. But, but that must mean... That's right. We now know that on the night in question, three bullets were fired. However, only two bullets were fired from the guns recovered from the crime scene. And until that incontrovertible inconsistency is somehow explained, we cannot and must not pass judgment. Ugh. Ugh. Good suffer. Ulda. I want french fries. While the submission examination remains incomplete, the court has been presented with new facts. Facts that would appear to shake the very foundations upon which the case against the defendant has been built. As is my prerogative in this situation, I hereby temporarily suspend the submission examination. By Jupiter. What? Bailiff, bring the witnesses back to the stand at once. No, I don't wanna I don't wanna cross-examine them again! Send him some garlic wine. <laughs> witnesses. Gopna. Were you listening to the proceedings while the defense carried out the summation examination? We was, Governor, we was! 
Perhaps we can dispense with the tedious preamble. Simply answer this one question. A third bullet has been identified at the scene of the crime. What do you make of that? Make of it? Go fine. Don't make nothing of nothing if I can help it. Um, is it one of yours? Go blimey, go, go blimey, not a chance. In that case, did you have an accomplice? What? Are you, what? No, well, the skull of us walk alone. It's just two of us, that's a trademark. But earlier you considered... Um... What's his face? The third. How soon we forget poor Sulky? Only two of the bullets from the crime scene originated from the firearms we have in evidence. The third bullet was fired from another gun. Where is it? Let me that an edge scratcher. Hmm... Council for the Defense. Yes? I should like to hear your thoughts regarding these new developments. The third bullet and the mysterious missing firearm from once it came. Thinking back over all the testimony we've heard and all the evidence we've seen, I think I'm starting to form a picture. A picture of what really happened that night. My lord, I think it's clear what this third bullet tells us about the Skulkin brothers. Uh, I'm gonna say they had an accomplice, no? I'm gonna say just in case. There had to have been a third person that managed to knock Gina out and all that. On that night at Windback's pawnbrokery, the brothers must have been working with a third man. Um... The witnesses are clearly doing their best to cover up the existence of this accomplice. But the evidence all points to the fact that there was someone else present, someone carrying a gun. Stop it with your song and dance. An accomplice, you say? Pigsville. These protracted proceedings have already forced us to endure two summation examinations. Yet in all that time, there has been not a murmur of a third man, if this is apparently wraith-like being exists. <clears throat> the court must be shown hard evidence. Without it, this fantasy will be crushed. Ah. The prosecution demands answers on two counts. Firstly, proof, evidence, that this accomplice was ever at the scene of the crime. And secondly, the identity of this spurious character. The Skulkins are lying, I know that. But, how can I ascertain the identity of the person they're hiding? With blood! We know the other guy has a gun, exactly. Will counsel? Uh, I'm supposed to prove the existence of this accomplice and reveal the person's identity. In response to the prosecution's demand, my lord, the defense is... I'm gonna say it again. And I'm gonna say I'm ready, even though I'm not, but whatever, I don't care. We go. We die like men! Defense is ready. I believe I can provide all the answers to prosecution demands. So my Nipponese friend. Despite the swimming eyes, you seem to think you have something to say. This promises to be interesting. I have to push forward now. There's no other option. I need to use every single piece of evidence available to me if it will make a difference. In that case, counsel, I would ask you to present the evidence without delay. On the night in question, in the moments leading up to the death of the victim, what proof have you that there was a third intruder present at the scene? Uh, I mean, I want to give over, over the blood portfolio, but you know what? Because I'm getting tired of this nonsense, I'm going to look at the walkthrough. Yes! I was right! It is a blood portfolio. The evidence is right here in this portfolio. By Jove, the portfolio again, is it? Do you expect the court to rifle through your papers itself? Be more specific. 
You claim one of those blood samples proves the presence of this third intruder. Well, which one is it? Which sample? Isn't it the music box? Because it's green? Uh... Oh. No, it's it's the calendar. I don't know why it's the calendar and not that, but okay. Oh, because the bullet never hit Sholmes, so that possibly couldn't be Sholmes' blood. What am I looking at here? There appears to be some green paint or such like around the bullet hole in the middle of the calendar. That's a blood stain, my lord. A blood stain? Green blood. Curious, even for you. It is the court to understand that the intruder was some unhuman creature. Shut your mouth and let me explain. It's something developed by M Mr. Herlock Sholmes. By the great detective! New invention! Stop! Not yet opinion stories! Stop! It's this, you see. It doesn't have a name yet, though. This Fogger spray cre uh, sprays a chemical that reacts with the different elements in people's blood to change its color. Different elements of people's blood? You're a green-blooded Vulcan. <laughs> Yes, everyone's blood is slightly different, you see, because it's made up of different elements. So by seeing what color it changes to, you can tell in the flash whose blood it is. Ooh, that brings a whole extra dimension to looking at blood. Top of blood in court room. Stop. Very exciting. Stop. As an example, this one shows the blood of the victim, Mr. Windbank. Ah, oh, a striking blue. Yes, so you see, the green color of this blood stain on the counter shows that someone else was shot in the main part of the shop. Now hold fire there, young man. Could it be from some unrelated incident, couldn't it? Look at the date, you idiot. No, it's not unrelated. The date showing on the calendar is the date on which Mr. Windebank was killed. By golly. Therefore, we can assume that whoever was shot was shot on the same day. Then whose blood is it? Well, the Skulkin brothers in the stand don't appear to be suffering from any gunshot injuries. Which means it must be the blood of somebody else. The third intruder, in fact. <laughs> whose identity the court is still waiting to hear. You can't delay this any longer, my learned friend. I was getting to it and then you interrupted me, you douchebag. Who is this alleged third intruder? Eggert! <laughs> The man's name is Edgar Benedict. Edgar Benedict? Who on earth are you talking about, Council? He paid a visit to Windebeck's pawn brokery on the afternoon before the incident took place. When the accused attempted to deceive the pawnbroker into releasing this article into her possession. Sure there's a lot of dust slamming going around because things are getting heated up, man. That's right. The man identified by the defense, Mr. Enig Edgar Benedict, then attempted to take the article from the defendant by force. Broker! Oh, um, yes, sir. I believe this friendly broker thief has just received an article from me now. Yes, yes, sir. Um... Told me, eggs Benedict. I yep, yeah. That name pun I got pretty quickly. Some of the people I can't get as fast, but uh. also hey, Tommy, okay, how you doing? Thanks for joining. Happy Thursday. Well, it might be Friday for you, but it's still Thursday for me. The other kind of question belongs to me. I demand for it to be returned at once. Yeah, that's a lie. What are you trying to pull? Give me back my other kill, you wastrel. Need to say. He's the third brother! That's exactly what they do! Oh my gosh, that's why he did that weird dance. Oh my gosh, he's the third brother. And he made a box just too. Inspector Gregson was there at the time and can attest to what happened. In the end, it was the inspector himself who took the disc. Can you corroborate this account, Inspector? Um, yes, my lord. That's more or less what happened. 
and in the interest of being thorough, I asked Windbag for a print showing the fellow. Take it from his red-handed recorder, uh, Gubbins. Gubbins? Yes, that's him talking to Mr. Windbag that morning. And you claim that this man is the brother's accomplice. Well, Mr. and Mrs. Skulkin? I would like to think someone on the other side of the world is following this court through the juror's telegraph. M maybe they are. Never seen a geezer before in my life. All my life, girl. All my life. Never seen them. Well, somewhat unsurprisingly, it appears our witnesses disagree with the assertion. Assertion. Whoops. I'm sure your lordship recalls my learned Nipponese friend's actual assertion. Which was that he could prove the identity of the alleged accomplice. Yes, and I can. Then show us the evidence. I agree, but you must see proof that the clean-cut gentleman in this photograph is a filthy criminal you say he is. Now is it the disc photo? This is the last piece of evidence. I've had a feeling that something has been missing in this trial from the very start. But now, I'm going to drag it kicking and screaming into the courtroom. Are you ready to present your answer to court then, counsel? Yes, my lord, the defense will present the evidence now. Proof that the man pictured in this photographic print was, in fact, the person struck by the third bullet. Because he took the disc, right? Turn green. As I mentioned before, on the afternoon of the day in question, the defendant attempted, deceitfully admittedly, to reclaim this disc from Windbanks. Which is when the aforementioned Eggert Benedict appeared on the scene, I believe. This man then attempted to purloin the article from the defendant's possession, no? That's correct, my lord. I myself was present at the time. It was following this that a minor incident occurred. Oh, of course, sir. Here's the disc for you. Very well. Do you also bid you farewell? Say goodbye to Stoyle. Wait a minute. That disc is mine. Ah, what what do you think you're doing, you little tramp? You've you've drawn blood, you filthy animal. Being a music box disc, it has countless small but sharp metal protrusions over its surface. Those protrusions caused Mr. Benedict's finger to bleed. And the resulting smear of blood is still visible on the disc now. Goodness, a blood stain, is it? My assistant and I have just analyzed the blood stain here in this very courtroom. Using my trusty Falker gun. Yes, and we added the results to this portfolio. I say! It's green! Exactly the same color as the blood around the calendar. The evidence is conclusive! The man calling himself Mr. Edgar Benedict, who was in Windbags earlier in the day, is the accomplice who was present at the scene of the crime that same night. Should they wear someone else there? Look at those two brothers now, they're sweating buckets! Oi, what are you talking about? It's boiling here! My lord, it is the opinion of the defense that Mr. Edgar Benedict should be summoned to the courtroom to testify. Hmm. Van Zeke's better not object. Like, shut up, shut up. It would certainly seem that we can ill afford to ignore this gentleman's apparent presence. Oh my gosh, of course you would. This has gone on long enough now. This flagrant ignorance of the mechanics of law. Herlock Scholz, you say? Yes, I've heard the name. The protagonist in a series of short stories for the vulgar classes, a god of detection of some such. And now you employ chemical substances devised by this fantastical persona in the highest court in the land? Do you expect us to take you seriously? The samples made by this plaything are not fit to be called evidence. Hmm. So the bloodstain turned a shade of green, what of it? Here's to you successfully proving that no other blood in the world would turn the same color. Ah, well. 
And pray, do not even think of suggesting that we should take Mr. Sholmes' word for it. Uh, is he right? Is Mr. Sholmes' concoction a load of rubbish? I don't know. I mean, he is a great detective. What are you talking about? We can't let him get worried that. I knew it would come to this. Of course Mr. Sholmes' invention isn't going to be recognized by any official body. But what other choice did I have? Hmm... I'm just remembering what Father Christmas over there said before. About how he was temporarily suspending the summation examination. Ah. In other words... The examination isn't over yet, is it? Good, good grief! What did you just say, young girl? And in the summation examination, the decision as to whether or not the trial continues is in the hands of the six jurors, isn't it? Shut your trap, Van Zeeks. So the way I see it, it doesn't matter what certain other people think of Hurley's invention. At least, not for now. Yes, she's right. Young lady, you have quite the devious mind. It really just comes down to one thing. Whether these ladies and gentlemen of the jury are convinced by what you say, Bruno? Is that about right, would you say? Or did I misunderstand something? Unbelievable. Mr. Sholmes' partner is a force to be reckoned with. Iris Wilson, sharpshooter. After that shrewd presses of the situation from an entirely unexpected source, it must be acknowledged that the previous summation examination has yet reached it, yet to reach its conclusion. This is absurd! Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, the court now looks to you for your final leanings in this matter. Oh, I don't wanna I don't wanna pit people, just just do it. Just just say just say not guilty and let's just get on with the trial. As proud citizens of Her Majesty's Britain, I'm sure you will come to this fair and just conclusion. So then, state your final decisions in turn, please. Muzai. 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 Yuzai. Yuzai. Muzai. Kaha. Yay, it's more in my favor. Haha. <laughs> Suck on that, Van Zeeks. Two call guilty and four call not guilty. Such is the outcome of the summation examination. My lord, with all due respect, this is an outrage. The prosecution refuses to accept this decision. Then you can leave, okay? Bye bye On what grounds? If these jurors are persuaded by some half-baked concoction devised by a pretender to be real to real police work, then they are ignorant to be trusted with the judgment of anyone's guilt. I'm sorry, Lord Van Zeeks, but the outcome of the summation examination cannot be ignored. The trial will continue. Ack. Yes, lose. Nevertheless, we find ourselves in a rather awkward situation. The defense has very reasonably requested the subpoena of a new witness. But sadly, I fear that will be impossible. What? The name the gentleman gave for himself, Eckert Benedict, is quite clearly false. I don't believe it, do you not? Just when I managed to prove the man was there that night. Um, could, could I say something? Who was that, please? Who spoke? Um, it was me, my lord. Sure, number five. What have you to say, madam? If possible, Inspector. Uh, me, ma'am. I wonder if you might show the photographic print to me again. The one in which the gentleman is shown. Oh, right, yes. This one, you mean. Of Mr. Benedict. Yes. There's no doubt in my mind. Juror number five, you don't mean to say... You know this man? Yes, I know him. What? 
Yo, good gracious. Order, order. <gasps> and she works in she works in wireless communications. Secrets have been getting out. If she knows him, he's probably been getting secrets out. Ah, everything connects together. Draw number five. How on earth? I'm a communications officer. Stop. As we can clearly see. The gentleman in the photograph is. Stop. Also a communications officer. Stop. He works in my office. Stop. A very talented operator, in fact. Stop. He should be in the communication station now. Stop. Tapping away on the telegraph. Stop. This doesn't seem right somehow. I can't put my finger on why, but it doesn't feel right. Better finish this case quick. Van Zeek may not make it back to his carriage if Joey has away. <laughs> Hells yeah. I'm gonna take him down. I suppose we all imagined that the accomplice would be some sort of hardened criminal. It's a bit unexpected to find out he has a respectable job by day, whatever he gets up to at night. Yes, I suppose that's it. I suppose that's why I felt something was wrong. If the gentleman is at London's communication station, we should be able to subpoena him within the hour. Lord Van Zeex, if you please. Yes, my lord. Make the necessary arrangements with all haste. As your lordship bids. The court will recess for one hour. When new witness arrives, we shall reconvene to hear the gentleman's testimony. Inspector Gregson. Uh, yes, my lord. I should like to hear from you specifically about events at the pawnbrokery on the day in question. Come to my chambers during the recess. Yes, sir, my lord. Very well. Court is adjourned until 1.40 p.m. Oh my gosh, please give me a break. My throat is killing me and I want to play more Animal Crossing. Yes, to be continued. Checkpoint reached. Yes, and hopefully the next section will be the last. Save your current progress. Yes. Oh my gosh. Edgar Benedict is really sulky skulking. And we're going to find out the whole secret and the truth, even though I can kind of garner it now, but whatever. Anyways, um, yeah, so tomorrow I will do another stream. Hopefully it won't be as long as regular streams, but I'll be doing an Animal Crossing stream because Happy Home Paradise will be out and I want to show that DLC. No karaoke tonight. No karaoke for the next week, man. My throat is killing me. Yeah, and then, um, yeah, more great Ace Attorney on regular stream days. And then whenever Final Fantasy XIV Endwalker comes out, I will stream a little bit of that. I won't be good, but I'll stream it. So yeah, now I'm off to play Animal Crossing. So um, thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you all next time. Stay twisty. Have a good night, everyone. Bye-bye.